So Nietzsche said truth serves life. Okay, in some sense, that's a Darwinian idea. Okay, if it's true enough, so that if you act it out or hold it, that increases your chances of survival and reproduction over long spans of time. That's true. Okay. We have no idea if our detailed knowledge about the material world is going to be the type of knowledge that allows us to survive and reproduce over a long period of time. It's not being tested from a Darwinian perspective at all. And you might say, well, of course the materialist perspective is right. Look what we've built with it. We've built hydrogen bombs, for example. But then you might object to that by saying, well, yeah, we've built hydrogen bombs, but the only reason we could build them or were willing to was because we left things out of the equation. Well, what things? Well, <laughs> things like, is it really a good idea to build hydrogen bombs, for example? I, I can give you another example of that. Um, I read a book a while back that was written by a KGB officer who claimed to be exposing the inner workings of the Soviet scientific community with regards to uh, biological warfare. And the, the people in the institute that he described were trying to cross Ebola with smallpox. Because smallpox is extremely infectious and Ebola is extremely deadly. So, like, that's a valid scientific uh, enterprise. Okay, then you think, oh, isn't that interesting that that's a valid scientific enterprise? Because obviously that's insane. So then you think, well, if it's so obvious that that's insane and it's a valid scientific enterprise, well, there's some disconnect there between two different views of what constitutes at least appropriate behavior. Now, you know, that this is why the definitions of truth start to become so important. It's like, is it truth as expressed in action? Is it truth as it serves Darwinian purposes? Is it truth as defined by the axioms of, material, of, of the materialist philosophy? Which, by the way, aren't even true anymore, because if you go down far enough into material reality, now we know you hit a realm that's so bizarre that we can't even comprehend it. And, it, which has, and it, there's implications of that bizarreness that we can't comprehend. So I would say we will develop a materialist philosophy of consciousness eventually, but it won't be using the same material that we use now. Right. So... So if, if I just interject, yeah. if I understand correctly, you're talking about there's, there, yeah. in, let's say, the industrialized north, in a, in a society that relies on scientific analysis to, to make it, to make it uh, to establish the fundamental bases on which the, the, society, the rest of the society is predicated. Yeah. There are certain assumptions about what is real versus what is not real, what is, mm -hmm. what is actually out there. Well, well, there's well. A distinction between subjects right. Well, but e but even there, there's an implicit assumption that what's out there in objective space is what's real. Okay. Well, but the problem with that is, is that that's an assumption about reality. Now, it's obviously a powerful assumption. But here's another way of looking at the Darwinian problem, as far as I can tell. So, part of the reason that the Darwinians insist that random mutation is the source of continual, it's not progress, continual survival is that the underlying environment changes and it changes unpredictably by, by, by its essential nature. It's unpredictable. Thus, if it's unpredictable, only random transformation can keep up with it. A lot of random transformation. Hopefully, the randomness of the environmental change will be matched by the randomness of the genetic change. Okay. So what that means in part is that the environment, so to speak, is finally incomprehensible because you can't predict it. Okay. So that means that a limited creature that's established itself by Darwinian means can't have access to the truth. They can only have access to sufficient truth. And sufficient truth is the truth that allows you to survive and reproduce. And from a Darwinian perspective, there isn't any truth past that. So I don't think Dawkins is a Darwinian. I think he's a Newtonian because he believes that there is truth. The Darwinians don't believe that. The Darwinians say, no, there's enough truth to keep you alive and have you survive. 
and that's all. And eventually all that's going to go too, because, you know, 99.5% of all species are extinct. That's an amazing uh, point, if I understand it correctly. Look, the American pragmatists figured this out in the late 1800s. Exactly. This reminds me of pragmatist philosophy specifically, which I have a soft spot for. Yeah. I mean, it speaks to me directly, but I, I'm thinking about other people who I know at the university or just in my life. If they hear this, they would just say, what? Like, so... It's as if we're living in two different worlds at the same time. We are. In the sense that we, we've internalized uh, the evolutionary mindset for a large part and parcel of, of, of how we understand reality. But at the same time, we hold on to this notion of truth as beyond our subjective experience out there. And we're acting right. directly when we conduct these experiences. Right, right. This is just true. Right. Well, so, well, part of the problem, too, is, is that because... because um, Science is reductionistic. Whenever you me measure something extremely accurately, there's a whole bunch of other things you're not measuring. And your assumption is that the knowledge gained by that precision isn't undone by the dismissal of everything else. Well, is that a valid claim? It depends on what your preconditions are for determining validity. Like, autom automobiles get you from point A to point B. You might say, well, that's their fundamental purpose. That's what they were designed to do. But I could say, well, no, it turns out that their fundamental consequence, if not purpose, is the complete transformation of cities, the demolition of the rural communities, and the destruction of the atmosphere. It's like, oh, we left something out. Yeah. You left something out. So you gain, you gain precision, but you pay for it with a loss of something else. And then there's the other problem, which is the pragmatic problem, which is truth for what? You know, I, it's difficult for me to say, see that it's dangerous, as far as I'm concerned, to consider truth independent of its effect on us. So I think if a truth drives you insane, it's not a truth. There's something wrong with it. That's like a definition. But, but I think it's a definition that's grounded in Darwinian thinking. And I think what I think about religion is a very Dar Darwinian. I think religion is an evolved, it's evolved knowledge, and it's knowledge about action. And the world is made out of action, so, especially the human world. And so, you can't say, well, that's not real. It's like, that's wrong. It's real. It's not something you can easily reduce to causal relationships between the fundamental building blocks of matter. But not only is it real, everyone acts like it's real. And then I would say, well, I don't care what people say about what they think about what's real. I care about how they act, because that actually shows what they really believe. So, and whatever their rational mind is computing and, and you know, chattering about on the surface, it's like, who cares about that? They're just possessed by ideas. You know, they, may, they might be defenders of the ideas too, but that doesn't mean they believe them. You know, depending on how you define belief. Right. Okay, so this is, this is getting to the, to the crux of it, I think. I think it'll be a good launching point for the rest of the discussion. So, we're talking here about truth, not a reinterpretation of truth from an, an objectivist, positivist, scientific perspective, which we've inherited from the rationalist era. You're saying... Well, it's a return to the original conceptions of truth. Right, along with the American pragmatists, and in light of, of Darwinian insight into what life yeah. is. Well, you know, the thing about the pragmatists, like I said, as soon as Darwin published The Origin of Species, they recognized that the theory of evolution was pragmatic. They got it like right now. They were very excited about it. So, and they, they got excited about it because the Darwinian claim is, things are always true enough, and that's it. And, and it isn't in some sense even because you lack knowledge. It's because you couldn't have the knowledge, even hypothetically, without running a simulation as complicated as the world itself. And even then, it wouldn't turn out the same way. Is this, so, is this like a Gaudelian 